Why do you carry all those bottle caps anyway? They jangle like crazy. really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch someone flip paper squares on a table. <laughs> Here's some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people? <laughs> well, 
What can I tell you? Whew. Glad to hear it. That'll be some happy mama, huh? Thank you. Really, it means a lot to me. Go with fortune, friend. Welcome back. What can I do for you? Let me have a look. Yes, take a look. God be with you. There's some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people live inside? Ah, the Eastern Virgin. What's the phrase? Uh, how sweet house.
Feels good to be doing some actual scouting, not just following. Upon wounds butchered everyone in New Canaan and nailed their corpses to the cliffs.
The spitter plants and the green monster men aren't native to Zion. Wonder where they came from. Look sharp. Lots of giant ants around here. We call them picnic killers. Don't really know what that means. Something from back when, I guess. See this? This is why your own two feet are better than any cart, whether it's pulled by critters or goes on its own. I hear some odd things about the civilized lands outside Zion. Is there really a giant thunder lizard people live inside? It must have been nice. When Zion was friendly enough, folks could make camp wherever they pleased. And not worry about white legs and... ...deadly critters. Whoa! Here we go!
check. I heard it. Salt upon wounds butchered everyone. Whoa! Here we go! Ugh. That's Pine Creek up there. Supposedly, it's one of only two ways out of Zion Valley. Of course, without a map, good luck surviving. That compass thing always knows where north is, huh? Even if it can't see the stars?
Fighting time! For as long as I remember, the dead horses have thought that places of the old world were taboo. Doesn't look so spooky to me. Feels good to be doing some actual scouting, not just following.
Bet they don't have anything as nasty as Yao Guai out where you come from, huh? Bet they don't have anything as nasty as Yao Guai out where you come from, huh?
shadow of a ghost. Fighting duck. Well, there can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch someone flip paper squares on a table. Well then, let's get to trading. The spitter plants and the green monster men aren't native to Zion. Wonder what... where they came from.
The Narrows up ahead. That's the Sorrow's territory. They're peaceful enough, but you don't want to make them mad. You are the one Joshua Graham sent to us. Blessings of the Father in the cave on you. Daniel is waiting for you. Waking Cloud is my name. I am midwife to the Sorrows. It sounds ill omen, no? Midwife to Sorrows? The children and the old have already been evacuated from the camp. They are safe enough, unless the White Legs come for us in force. I tend to other hurts and sicknesses that afflict our tribe. I also scout the valley for the herbs I use in my medicines. What would you speak of? Have you not heard of the god of the new Canaanites? He is our protector and our judge. He helped our ancestors find their place here in Zion. He gave us many gifts, but we are not to seek him out. His caves are forbidden to us. Those who seek them out are taken from us. Perhaps you do not fully understand the new Canaanites. I have seen the Father's images. His holy bride and holy son were given unto the world to save it. They dwelt in the caverns of the mountains, caverns which can still be seen today. The people sinned against him and were punished with the end that came in fire and the loss of the Holy Tongue. Only the new Canaanites were spared. I'm sure Daniel could tell you more. His knowledge of the Father is greater than my own. Daniel is a wise man and a great friend to the Sorrows. He taught me to speak the language of New Canaan, the English from the Holy Books. Yes. The language of the new Canaanites is the holy tongue, for it is the language their sacred books are written in. The father in the caves brought it to them after the judgment, but the ancestors of the sorrows sinned against him. They were denied the true tongue. Six years. He attended the birth of my third child. It was a hard birth. The river nearly carried my water to the father and my child's with it. Daniel knew the ways of New Canaan's medicine. He stepped in and saved both of our lives. After the birth, I asked Daniel if he would teach me what he knew of childbirth. He agreed, and so here I am. What would you speak of? We have dwelt in the Narrows since the end that came in fire. When the Father in the Caves punished the world, and made us forget the Holy Tongue. We have had good relations with the other tribes in the valley, at least before Salt Upon Wounds brought his white legs here. We have Daniel to thank for our continued existence. His advice and help has kept the white legs from overrunning us so far. I do not know how long even he can protect us, though. He is War Chief of the White Legs and the worst butcher of them all. The tribes he has crushed are many. The warriors he has slain, countless. A sorrow's Yaogwai fist is a sacred symbol. It shows that we belong to the tribe and have willingly undertaken a dangerous quest to aid the tribe. Each sorrow makes his own. And only after hunting and slaying a Yaogwai that threatened our people our shaman, White Bird, oversees the rites. Perhaps if you spoke to him, he would allow you to undertake such a quest. Then I will look forward to our next speaking.
What can I tell you? Let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, a man came through the valley with one of the caravans. Tall man, big mustache, carried a guitar. I asked what he did for his living, and the interpreter told me he was a singer. What is that? I asked. The man explained that he went from place to place and sang for people, who gave him food and shelter and care in return. I couldn't believe that there was a place in this world where a man could do that. I promised myself then that one day I'd explore that world myself. Is it? I always heard it was rather large outside the valley. Well, wherever he is, I hope he's well. I, um, I haven't told him yet. Never had the growins. You'd do that? Sure. Sounds smart to me. He might not get so mad at you. You sure? It's easy to get lost out here without a guide. All right. Joshua won't be too happy. But all right. The dead horse has told me details about the attack on your caravan. A stranger's sympathy might not count for much, but for what it's worth, I'm sorry. The sorrows will mourn your friends, too. They mourn everyone, even the white legs. They have sensitive souls. Innocent, if there is such a thing. In spite of what's happened, I hope that Joshua and I can help you out of here. But to be frank, we need your help too. I used to help the Sorrows with various medical problems and general issues they were having, but my bishop sent me here as a missionary. We new Canaanites believe that there is a path to salvation for everyone, and it's important that we set people on that path if they are willing. I'm trying to make amends for allowing our problem to become their problem. The new Canaanites, I mean. The White Legs have always fought with us. And with Joshua returning, Caesar has motivated the White Legs to stamp out the new Canaanites entirely. That means the tribes we work with, too. It's already happened. I just want to prevent something terrible from happening to the Sorrows. Yes, but not just White Legs. Raiders, too. Prospectors, slavers, anyone who thinks they can exploit the ignorant and the innocent. We lost the tar walkers and the crazy horns. We did our best, but we made mistakes. We paid for them, but they paid more. I'd like to get out from under that debt someday. Until then, it's enough to stop ourselves from getting deeper in the hole. To remove the sorrows from harm's way. I have to give credit to the White Legs for finding their way here. Though I imagine many died in the process. But they can't follow us east. Not into the Grand Staircase. They don't know how to live off the land. We head there. We can find some safety. Of course. There's an old saying that goes... If you want peace, get ready for war. You've got me figured half right. I'll shoot dead any white leg that tries to creep into this camp. But it's only to protect the Sorrows. The Lord helps those who help themselves. But the Sorrows don't know how. Joshua and I do. Since I got them into this mess, I need to get them out. There is an important difference between killing in defense and waging war. Even a Gentile like you should know that. Joshua is a living Bible of all mankind's miseries of war. The debt he has levied through his actions, he repays every day. He is a monument both to God's unending forgiveness and to humanity's unfathomable capacity for cruelty. It's written on every inch of his body. When you look at him, 
Do you only see a man of God? Beneath those bandages, he is burned flesh. As he burns, so does he consume everyone around him. Joshua wants to fight because the white legs have stoked the naked flame inside of him. You, you see the light, but do not yet feel the heat. I can pray that you never will, but it isn't up to me, and it isn't up to God. It's up to Joshua. They're hateful savages who live only to plunder and destroy. Their leader is a devil called Salt Upon Wounds. War is all he knows. Everything he has, everything that tribe has, was taken by force, raiding, and scavenging. It's said there's no man deadlier at close range, that that power fist of his has smashed a hundred skulls. Maybe that's true, but so what? It's a low form of leadership. A tribe that knows only war has no future, and so he'll lead them to Caesar. Father in the... Oh, right. He's some spirit the Sorrows used to believe in. Watched over them from the caves in the valley. They marked some of the caves around here because they think they'll be punished for going inside. I think as more of them learn the teachings of the new Canaanites, they'll lose their old superstitions. Oh? Oh. <sighs> of course. How stupid of me. They probably also think Mary is the mother and Jesus is the child. No wonder they picked up on things so easily. I guess it just goes to show how difficult it is to communicate sometimes. Well, I'll be. I was starting to lose hope we'd be able to get any of this, much less all of it. Tribals are smart, but, well, they're ignorant. <sighs> Letting go of a taboo is difficult for them, so I knew it would have to be one of us. Turns out all it took was a gentile, or, uh, no offense. These supplies are a godsend. But if we're going to evacuate Zion without drawing more white leg attention, I need you to go back into the valley. Specifically, I need you to scout out some locations for white legs and try to recover a map of Grand Staircase, a wilderness area to the east. There's also the matter of the roads. We're going to be heading out of the east side of the park, but I'm not sure the way is clear. I appreciate the enthusiasm. There aren't a lot of people in the wasteland with kindness to spare for anyone who isn't kin. Since you've been poking around the valley, you might see more activity from the White Legs. One of the Sorrow's hunters, Waking Cloud, has volunteered to help guide you through the valley. She has a special talent for staying out of sight. After this, it's just a matter of getting everyone out of here safe and sound. And hopefully, you can head back to the Mojave without any more trouble. Daniel said that I was to travel with you until you have completed your scout. Is this pleasing to you? Certainly. We should make haste then. If something of mine will help you, take it. I hope you will do the same for me. If something of mine will help you, take it. I hope you would do the same for me. Katubiu. I do. A fine husband and three children. I miss them each day, but I take comfort in knowing they are safe. When we learned that Salt Upon Moons had defiled Zion with his presence, Daniel ordered the children, the old, and the sick evacuated from the camp. My husband volunteered to lead the hunters that went with them for protection. I try not to worry about them, but we have had no news for so long, and Daniel seems sad when I ask him about it. Sad and... 
a little frightened. Perhaps he will. I sometimes feel he thinks he must protect me. If he has news, I would know of it. Then I will look forward to our next speaking. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it even to the foundation. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Do you know what it means? Given those two choices, yes. In the best of all possible worlds, they would just leave us in peace. But they won't. I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work. And the good Lord knows there's much to be done here. They're still God's children. But if they turn against their brothers and sisters, won't listen to reason. If they pollute the Lord's temples on earth, like Zion, who are we to stand by and let them continue? Daniel does not yet see things the way we do. He is the John to our Matthew and Mark. When you have a moment, speak with him. There may still be time to save Zion from the White Legs, to keep God's children here, in this living temple. Welcome back. What can I do for you? Let me have a look. Yes, take a look. It's not something I enjoy, but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all New Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, I met two men from a group called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. No, not then. Back then he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did. And the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first, but eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up, because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history, assuming Edward hasn't changed it. This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. 
a series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm, but the flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left, never done anything to shame them. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. You are kind to offer, but no, there's nothing you can do. We don't use chems, but I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning, my skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. I had heard of him, but when we were preparing to enter the Mojave, he didn't seem relevant to what was happening. From what I've learned since Hoover Dam, he handled the Mojave tribes in a fashion not entirely dissimilar from Caesar. It's too bad. Love the sinner, hate the sin. With Caesar, it's often very difficult to see through all of that sin to the person inside. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR's supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the Divide was too much for them to handle. Our Fruman Tarii told us what they saw. Only fools and madmen would march into a place like that. All roads wind down to the same spot. The grave. They said all that's left there is a gaping wound cut into the earth. Cursed and damned. No place for God-fearing folk. Not all of them, but they couldn't take 127 North to get around the mountains. As if Death Valley weren't enough, they had the Divide and Big Empty to deal with. From what the Legion's explorers reported, the Big Empty may as well have been a wall to any living thing approaching it. He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. I thought he might. It's been some time since I've visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. 
I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him? And let him know. Follows Chalk needs more guidance in his life. I'd prefer it not come from me. If people want to look to me for how to fight, I will show them how. I believe God put me on this earth for that very reason. But to live like me, think like me. No. There are better people for them to look to for such things. God be with you. <laughs>